be writing and perform musicals and songs about science to make science understandable. Science sisters, they're here to talk. So we did a lot of singing. We were on the side of the mountain, really wanted to write a song about climate change. The first thing that we wrote about the extinction of the dinosaur. It's just me living out my dream. Science sisters, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Science Sisters. I'm your host, Iris van Zels, and today I am joined by Matthew Kemp and Roberta Wilkinson, who together form Geologize Theatre, which sounds already amazing. So I guess the first question would be, can you tell me what this means? What do you do? What is Geologize Theatre? Um, so yeah, we're Geologize Theatre and um, basically in our spare time we um, write and perform musicals and songs about science. I guess it's sort of usually about geology stuff but also um, other stuff as well and um, trying to make science understandable through songs and through theatre and storytelling and things like that. I absolutely love this. I love theatre so much, which I'm guessing you like have similar vibes. Um, so take us back. Like, how did this start? Because Well, yes. we Matthew and I met doing our undergraduate degrees in, uh, and we were studying earth sciences together. And we, uh, we did our mapping project. So that was like a, a sort of, you have to make a geological map of an area. And that's something you had to do in the third year of the degree. And um, we ended up being field part so we spent something like six weeks or something on the side of a mountain <laughs> in Catalonia in Spain and there were and it was there were long days and there was a lot of walking and there were also quite a lot of wild boar around <laughs> that we were probably overly scared of so we did a lot of singing while we were on the side of the mountain to pass the time and also to keep these wild boar at bay so <laughs> then we kind of after spending kind of weeks and weeks doing that I think we maybe realized that um we could turn that into something useful and so then we started doing shows together um and we've been doing that ever since. And since we both started our PhDs, um, it's kind of continued and have been a really fun thing that we do on the side. I love that origin story. <laughs> it started off like, it's definitely started off with us like being slightly terrified in, in these woodlands and... Um, to, to wild animals. Well, that's how I remember it, but maybe my yeah, no, I, I think that's yeah, that's definitely the the origin story. I, I guess if you go further back, both of us sort of have uh, in our spare time throughout our sort of school years and things done. So I, I, I guess I have a more sort of classical music background, as it were, um, sort of um, learning the piano and, and bassoon and, and, and various other things, and um, and sort of being in, in choirs and stuff, and, and just also loved musicals and um, that kind of thing. And uh, Roberta did a lot of sort of theatre and stuff and also has done a lot of singing as well so um i guess that sort of aspect of it has always been something that we've really enjoyed and obviously as it's our you know phds we, we love science as well so uh, as sort of mashing the two together uh yeah seemed the obvious thing matthew is a really really fantastic musician i think one of the testaments to that is that he plays um improvised piano for like improv comedy groups and i think that is like a real if you could do that well then oh. you must be a pretty fantastic pianist so yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very cool indeed wow okay so so if you are going to you know write a song about something sciencey how do you come up with the topic and how like how do you what is your process in, in writing the song or maybe also the, the entire show around it I, I guess maybe with the topics um in terms of like the topics and what we write about it's been a real mixture so sometimes we've written about stuff that we um maybe somebody's asked us to do something or write something and so that's why we've written about that topic um or we've we've written about a topic because we know that there's interest in it um and sometimes it's just like something that we feel passionate about that we want to kind of get out there like we really wanted to write a song about climate change so um, we did that, for example. We like to write songs about women in science uh, and like historical women in geology and earth sciences because as a field, historically, all the big, kind of big names that people know about are uh, men and actually there have been some women who've really contributed a lot to the field and we like to sing about them, to celebrate them and to sort of tell their stories. So um, we wrote a song about Mary Anning, who is an amazing paleontologist and a fossil hunter who... Um, it has uh, now got a statue to her um, down, um, I think, in Lyme Regis, where she was from. And then we also wrote a song about Marie Tharp, who's less well known, who was really important in the discovery of plate tectonics. So we like to 
we 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 really enjoy kind of telling those stories. Oh, I agree. I, I I really like it very much, especially since they're not that well known. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, yeah, it's just this theme of like them not getting the credit that they they deserved in their time. So, but yeah, Mary Anning's got loads of publicity recently. It's great, and because she's got this statue now, and there's that great kid that um did the campaign to get the statue, which I thought was really inspiring. Yeah, so I guess the topic is can come from anywhere. Maybe somebody's asked us to. Maybe something we really care about or really interested in. I think in terms of the first musical that we wrote that um the first big musical that we wrote about the extinction of the dinosaurs that was that just came out of like studying that in our degrees and neither of us specialize in it but just like being really interested in the story so the story of that discovery and of the discovery of the meteorite um crater and that it was a meteorite that killed the dinosaurs but that spoilers <laughs> it was a meteorite that killed the dinosaurs but that there was some role for all this volcanism that was going on and, and all of that and we were just really intrigued by kind of the story of that discovery so that gave a shape to the show and then inspired us to kind of uh, write around that but then I guess when, once we've got the topic then we have like more of a we've developed over time and more of a structured process about going about how to write actually write the songs which maybe Matthew can come in on yeah so I, I guess um when we sort of have an idea of what the song's going to be about we the first thing we try and sort of zone in on is getting that hook so that's sort of, um both the music and the words of a chorus to try and um which we want to be the most important thing the thing that people are going to be humming when they um sort of leave the performance and that will stick in their heads and um often as i said like the music and the words often come together in in one in that sort of um hook um, and once we've sort of come up with that it's sort of builds out from there so we uh think about the chorus and sort of filling that out again having the most key important points that we want to get across in the chorus and then we think about the whole song and all the different points that we want to get across and um put them into sort of clearly defined sort of verses or sections again it's it, i guess whenever you're writing anything sort of scientific whether it's a blog whether it's a you know, paper um you're always putting um things in in an order which is going to make things as um easy and understandable as possible but also telling a story and that's what a song is as well and once we've sort of got it in our heads what we're going to do in the verses what we're going to do in the choruses what we're going to do in the bridge that sort of um um we yeah just start building it up building it up and uh work out the different chord sequences and yeah and then Think more about the performance and who's going to sing which bit and how we can sort of put comedy and humor into it as well and yeah and eventually it sort of all, all comes together that is what we do and it makes it sound very like structured and process in yeah. terms of a process but i would say that as you know if you've tried to do anything creative or making this series um or write anything it's like much more of a ah oh, this isn't working like why can't we find a rhyme or why can't we get this topic across properly and um also you know it's there's a lot of consideration about like what audience you're you're singing to so exactly. we we do a lot of stuff for kids um for kids and so we'll do things like reading the primary school curriculum to see like do, what do they know what don't they know um so i think thinking about your audience is something that we do uh, and then just the struggle of it as well i guess there's yeah i definitely there's those moments where just everything's zinging and you're like oh maybe this music thing and then and the sort of the excitement of having um these musical ideas which all seem to fit together but then there are very long periods of time where you're just like really having to go okay we we have to sort of get this information in in some way how are we going to do that and um how are we going to do as as roberta said using words that are going to be understandable for the age range that we're um creating the song for um and yeah eventually it's, it does come together but um but yeah it's, it's, it's and yeah often a work, work in progress as well I, I guess we're always we've gone back and changed a lot of songs when we've sort of performed them and um thought about them yeah. i think it's just like doing it and try and trying to produce something and then like iteratively trying to make it better um but we're definitely not like experts we're always like learning every time we write a new one um what's really lovely about writing songs about science is that like it gives you the structure so the structure of songs and like having a chorus and a certain maybe a certain number of lines or a rhyming scheme that you've used it gives you a structure in which to put the information and that makes you think more about kind of what's the most important and the order of things and you kind of 
should be thinking about that when you're writing your scientific paper or your piece of communication that's maybe a more traditional written format. And the song just kind of amplifies all of the same challenges that you have and adds this like maybe extra creative element. But it's like, it's kind of similar sk skills, um, I think. And then, but just with some <laughs> musical stuff on top. So yeah, anyway, there we go. That's, that's maybe how we write songs. <laughs> That sounds good. Okay, so so you just mentioned that you're looking at some of the curriculums for the kids that, you know, the age range we're considering as your target audience. So so what kind of things do you specifically put into your songs when you know this is going to be a kid's song? Is it uh, the certain topic or the words that you use or, I don't know, melodies, simple things? Yeah, maybe all of those things, really. And um, I think when you're doing stuff for really small kids... Um, having like an element of call and response is really important mm -hmm. and we've also found I think we've fallen into the trap in the past of making songs too complicated and I think one of the keys for for very young children is having a simple chorus that does repeat and then that potentially they can join in with at the end you kind of learn how people respond to your your songs as you're doing it so I would say yeah like all those things that you said like n not using too com don't not using technical language um or or sometimes we deliberately use technical language because that's what we're trying to teach them like the name of a, a type of thing but we will have will have done an introduction and then that will be the word in the chorus so they'll remember that word for example um but yeah call and response the framing of the song as well and um, is really key as 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 roberta said if, if there's like a specific thing that we're which, which the kids may not know about yet um we probably wouldn't just like launch into the song and uh, hope that they sort of keep up and um, we'd often have sort of a dynamic theatrical sort of presentation part before singing the song, um, which gives it a bit of context and sort of primes the audience ready for um, what's to come. We just try and fit it to the audience, to the um, type of event that we're at. So what is the age range of the kids that you're kind of, you know, usually kind of performing for? I mean, it varies, but um, I guess the last thing we did was for like seven plus. We usually yeah. say like something plus, that's, that's how it works. But I think we've done like five plus before and then um, I, all the way up to adults as well. We've done choice for adults as well, and teen, like kind of teenagers and adults. I think I think we've often ended up writing stuff which is probably most appropriate for like the upper years of like primary school, so 9, 10, 11, and then the lower years of secondary school, so 11, 12, 13. Um, but um, yeah, as, as Roberta said, with the more call and response stuff, there's a, there's a few of our songs which are designed to be for younger kids and inevitably, even if you're sort of marketing it as something for slightly older kids, um, their younger siblings are going to come along as well. So you need to have something which is um, sort of dynamic and interesting enough for them to not be screaming in the background. So is there also some kind of longevity to what you are doing? I mean, you have the dinosaur musical, you have some standalone songs, I imagine. Now you're writing this climate change musical. Are you just having all of them in your repertoire and then pulling them out whenever you need to? Or um, So at the moment, we're writing a, a musical about climate change uh, for kids. And so that's definitely taking all our focus at the moment but um yeah i mean we have a youtube channel so we put some of our stuff on there and i think but we much prefer doing live performance so um yeah those will that will always be kind of our for the moment i guess we have sort of the because, because we're starting to get this back catalog of various different songs it means that um when we want to do a more sort of variety show sort of style thing of um not necessarily having a clear narrative as as much as the dinosaur musical uh, or the climate change musical would have um but still doing a show where we have our songs within the, the sort of framework of um explanations about them but also with some thematic underpinning um, throughout it and um, maybe a bit of minor character development you never know <laughs> <laughs> okay i find this very cool and very exciting i've seen some clips uh on youtube indeed but i was wondering because they're not full shows how does a show work is it just you two and do you play different characters i you mentioned there's probably some scenes which are not uh you know on on music not songs necessarily so what do they actually look like <laughs> 
So I, I guess um, basically, um, yeah, it is just the two of us. And um, so far in our musicals, it's mainly been just me playing the keyboard and uh, piano and, um, and then both of us singing. Sometimes with some sort of percussive element, I used a, a cajon. Um, I, I guess for our dinosaur musical, um, there was sort of this narrative of us being these science detectives working in the geological investigations department and all of the audience members, the kids there um, and the adults, they were sort of new recruits to this um, oh. agency and they were going to try and help us try and solve this cold case of what killed the dinosaurs. And in some ways, that was more of a, I guess, a dynamic lecture in some ways. We were playing characters. Um, I guess they were slightly close to our own characters, or my, mine was particularly, I would say. But um, I think we'd sort of go through and um, there would be a clear, you know, this scientific discovery story with all the different beats that you'd have within that story. Um, we sort of discovered it as we went along and um, had various songs at various points. I think in our uh, dinosaur musical, we play, we do play lots of different characters. So kind of the main characters are us being detectives. I mean, it's just me like living out my dream of being like a, a, a in like a detective show. And I love detective drama. So it's like, oh, okay, yes. well, I'll just write a character who's a detective and I'll be a science detective. Not that that's a thing, but, <laughs> but we kind of are like, I don't know, we use it a lot to talk about like the scientific method with the kids and like the idea that you keep searching for clues and then this will inform your hypothesis and like so we really enjoy using that as an analogy um and yeah and then I also get to play <laughs> um a detective which is good fun and then um but then throughout the thing we have they're kind of silly detectives so they've been they've been demoted um and you know everyone's got to kind of help them out because they're a bit silly because they keep breaking into song and oh. they keep playing characters so we get to do that um and so we get to play dinosaur we have a sing-off between a dinosaur and a mammal and we um have a song where we play the two scientists that discovered that helped to discover the um or come up with the the meteorite hypothesis for how the dinosaurs died um and so we have a song where we play them and we um we sing from their perspective so um yeah <laughs> yeah we get to play basically just like get to be really silly on stage for an hour um yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> I want to see it so badly. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, we like we like to do that because we're really interested in talking to kids about the scientific method and and about kind of how you how how they could all we all could be scientists about how we think about the world and how we go about processing information and looking for information and assessing it and and analyzing it. And for us, that's kind of much more important to get that across than it is to get across like a set of facts. Because I mean, the kids like a lot of the kids know more about dinosaurs than me because kids just love dinosaurs right and so um we could do a show all about that but I don't know that we'd be able to teach them very much because some of them are just so so into dinosaurs and so our thing is like okay what can we what can we like teach them that they'll take away that's not like a list of facts and yeah we we think you know using stories and and these analogies we can talk about the scientific method and how science works and who's sci who is a, who can be a scientist and that they can be scientists and um yeah detective fun <laughs> <laughs> oh cool i like it so do you then also have i don't know someone from the technical side helping you with or do you do all those things yourself sometimes we have somebody who helps us with lighting and sound it sort of depends on the venue and we've done gigs where we've had no assistance and we've done gigs where we've had like we we've done gigs that are like part of some part of like a bigger festival where you're like wow we've got this amazing sound technician who's like making me sound so good right now and then we've had ones where we were like oh gosh we sound so bad and there's nobody to turn up the volume we'll turn down the volume so it sort of depends on like what our funding situation is and whether or not the venue's got the facilities because as you can imagine like if you're performing to a school assembly you're obviously not going to have any of that kit so we like to be able to do either um but obviously it's nice when you've got got someone sound but so if far we've done like all the production side we've done ourselves um so yeah the, all the sort of organizational stuff as well as the the writing and the performing so it's like very much in-house so far but um but definitely people have helped us along the way big shout out to the oxford museum of natural history because they're um they've been really helpful and they've like helped us with some of those extra bits that go along with doing a show so and and also um also shout out to um uh, a lot of our friends and colleagues as well who um because often we're writing songs about 
topics which aren't actually our research area and um it's great being part of a university where you've got all these people who are super interested in all those different things and we can uh interview them in formally or informally about um all these different things and people have helped us and looked over sort of the songs and the scripts to make sure we're not saying anything uh, anything wrong so so you know in an ideal world i'm I'm assuming you're kind of finishing up your phds or trying to um yeah <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how would you imagine um that this continues after your phds or i don't know do you have any ideas about that but there's there's so much uh, um, uncertainty but as roberta said we love doing it we love doing this so much and it'd be great if we can um carry this on in in some way whether whether that be um in sort of still like at the moment in sort of our spare time or um, more than that or less than that we're not sure thank you very much for being here and joining this interview if um if you liked this video and you want to know more about geologist theater you can find links in the description below and um i will see you in the next episode of science sisters bye 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 <laughs> are you going to edit this okay right yeah. please keep it up <laughs> me any supervisors listening be be assured that we protect our phd working time I don't really know the answer to that question but um oh god dropping things it's all, it's all going yeah. wrong now. Let's make everything go wrong so this bit definitely gets cut. <laughs> so are you both in your final years of your PhD? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Said with dread. <laughs> like, oh God. <laughs>